Special attention to the hip, knee, foot alignment. So just let it fall into the same line. Don't let the knee fall out of the structure. As a reminder to myself, just let it sit. That's You're frozen. You're back again. I see it's a little bit. Yeah, bit frozen. Okay. Okay. Right. We're back. Okay. Just go now to a side to side. You know the drill. Go side to side. Just let it go. Hopefully it's okay. And again, just paying attention to the, this, this alignment between the hip to the knee. Just let the knee fall into the foot. Just be careful of going over the foot. Just focus on kind of compressing the body down. Yes. And just put a bit more attention. You should kind of work the upper body, especially in the mornings. But in this case, just have a bit more feeling of the lower body. So let it kind of sink through the lower body. You can also play a little bit with like a, like a wider posture. Just let the body kind of compress down to the stretcher. So play a little bit like raising the feet, a little bit like a kind of sumo stomp, but nice and light. Just kind of placing the feet, coming up, placing the foot down. And it's a very light kind of squat. Very I find the weight of the body just drains down. Shake the leg out a little bit if you do it. Just kind of play with it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You look like a sumo. You can think like a good, like a gorilla with a big, like big, big, big kind of mass. Really, like go, 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 go. Something quite heavy about. It. Really focusing on the lower body. As you get more and more into it, just go down a little bit deeper into the squat. So just let the body sit down more and more into the ground. Sink down more and more. That's it. That's it, great. Okay, great. Very nice. Okay. So just go nice and slow, just feet, shoulder, just a bit wider than shoulder width, just the hands here, just going to squat down, lengthen through the back, nice and slow, up and down. <clears throat> you can do this a few ways, I, I, what I tend to do is kind of count through it, or just kind of take it slow. The key thing is like, I mean, if I go slow, the, the key thing is that I don't speed up as I do the movement. So what I don't want to do is go like, I start slow and then start to speed up, or I come up fast and then I speed up the end. Keep the keep whatever the whatever the the speed you do it. Keep it constant. So if it's slow, do all the part of it slow, 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 slow. So you should feel just the same movement and just go to the point that's comfortable. Hold it a little bit and then just start to come up. And again, pick a pace for it. So you can do it fast, slow. Actually, it doesn't matter so much. Better slow. Got more control. It's a bit tougher. Just let the body kind of sit down. And start with one pace and keep to it. Nice and slow, really, really, really slow. Take your time. Use the breath as you go. Get to the maximum range and then just hold it a little bit and then come up. 
Feel all the time the lower body's really active. Doesn't really get a chance to become kind of passive. You're just kind of slightly similar movement, just come a little bit wider. You're going to come down like into a kind of whole stance. So it's like this, and feel that you kind of arc the arc the legs out. So you kind of create a bridge with the body. <clears throat> and then what you want to do with the with the knees, straighten the knees, pull the hips back, and then straighten the body out. So you're going to go from this position, quite straight with the with the spine up, and then stretch, pull the hands forward. At the same time, pull the hips and the knees, straighten the knees. You're here, lengthen through the spine. Here, and then once you get to full length, just bring the arms, drop them down. The hips away from the hands. And then what you're going to do is just bring the feet in towards the hands. You bring the hands and the feet together, you go into a forward fold, and then just very, very slowly just come up, pull the body up. And then you're just going to start again, just going to wide, find a kind of whole stance, nice and long in the back. Wide and then just start to pull the hands and the hips apart, bring them forward, pull the knees back, pull through the body, and then down to the ground. Keep the hips and the hands pulling apart, and then just start to shift the weight more into the hands, shift the feet forward. We just do three or four of these, depending on the pace. <clears throat> like a nice and wide, sinking down, long in the back. Pulling the knees back, stretching forward. All the way to the ground. Shifting the weight more into the hands. And nice and slowly coming back up. Okay. So we'll do this kind of coming to the ground now. So <clears throat> what you're going to do is forward fold. The first thing is you're going to stretch up the whole body with the hands. Stretch down as if you're kind of moving from the pelvis. So kind of raise up. Stretch down. Down with the hands. If you need to, start to bend the knees. Get the hands flat into the ground. And then all I want to do is take the legs back one at a time. Just come into this position. Yeah. And then just come back, feet through, stand up, draw the body up. So it's quite nice and flexible. Just stretch up, fold over, bend the knees if you need to, get the palms into the ground, take the foot back, take the foot back, bring the foot forward, and then just come through. And just play with it in that kind of flexible way as you can. <clears throat> so just roll through it up. Just do it three times. Roll forward, hands down, body back. Just pull the body up. Okay, good. That's it, nice. This is three more. You're going to get to the side. You're going to get to the same point. Come down, shift the legs back, and then pull the hips into the ground. And then you come into a kind of cobra. So you're going to come up, uh, raise back up. You can either put the hand, put the feet in one at a time. Or you can also jump the legs forward. So if you like, you can make it a bit more complicated just by bringing the legs back. So you can do stretching out, forward, pull the legs back. Um, Stretch the body up. Roll up. So just play with it. Or you can put the legs down back one at a time if you like. So just keep it nice and flexible. Up. Down. Oh, bring the back up. Yes. 
Matthias. Yes. Great. Okay. We're going to play a little bit. We're not going to do a we're not going to do a cartwheel or a handstand, but this is about transferring the weight into the hand into the hand. So we did this a little bit last week. I just wanted to play a little bit with it. So just onto the ground. Again, contact in the hands and just playing with shifting the weight into the hands. So you can do like very very short movements with the feet, but it's just about getting into the hands and and pulling putting the weight into the hands. So there's much more feeling like this. And I just want you to feel a few times. Just let the feet go. Let the feet go. So you, you could take this into a handstand eventually, or you could take this into a cartwheel. But just for now, just play with just just letting the weight of the body transfer over. So the hands come down. Very, very light. And just come up each time, hands down. And just play with it. Just play with the weight coming out of the feet. Trying to make it as easy as possible. Oh, watch the feet. There we go. That's going to do now what you can do is both hands in the ground just want you to play with reaching up the hand one hand and then placing the other down so feel free to really explore so don't do this in a kind of static way you can move around a little bit but just play with being in three points the two feet and the arms just transferring the weight again for just a few minutes just a few times <clears throat> just play with taking the weight out of one arm holding the body in Three points. And just play attention to the transition. Nice and slow and smooth. And just pay attention to the structure, the shoulder especially. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's really slow. What you're going to do now is transition. So this is like going from a front crawl, this to a crab. You go to this position. So you go to like this position. So just play with. You can do this in, in many different ways. I'll show you a few simple ones. You just start from the front crawl like this. You just transition the hands over. So there's a point when I go into the hand, shift the hands together, and then I let the body come out. Bring the foot through, place the hand to the back. And then you can either reverse it, reverse the motion, or if you want to play with it, you can keep the motion going the other way. So just play with this one from front crawl, front crawl to crab. And take a few steps in each position. Nice and slow, keep the breath going. And just explore different ways of doing it. And this is really about exploring your relationship with the ground through different contact points. Again, try to make it as easy as possible and as flexible as possible. And just play with it a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Nice. That's uh, so. yeah, 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 yeah. nice, Petrus. Nice. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and if you find this quite easy, just start to go to make it a little bit more complicated. It's where you start to just go straight into it. You start to go into kind of two points of contact. So just a foot the hand. Foot the hand. Yeah. So you basically just go through. Through. 
and you can really explore with it. So you've just got now two points of contact. If you want to make it hard, we can just keep at the same level, just playing with it. But it's just a way to make it a bit more complicated. Where I'm just in the box. Put the knee and the hand up. You can just play with your balance in the structure. Awesome. That's it. Very, very nice. Good. Okay, just shake out the body a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to go a little bit of a tenure work. So this is a nice exercise I'll show you. Just take a, take a few breaths. I'm going to do the fist basically. So you're in the ground. You can do this a few ways. You can work with the fist. If you've got a hard floor, use the palm contact. If you want, you can also, I'll give you three ways you can explore it. The first one's just with the palms, like this. Just moving around. Just pressing. And then the second one, use like a copy this way. So you use the heel, the, the blade of the hand like this. And you can mix this one with the palm contact because I get more support from the palm. I can explore this. So this kind of copy would. So just play with this one first. Play with these two, going from the palm contact, just moving around. And then going to kind of copy work with the hand, rolling the blade. Just get used to it in the structure and we'll make it a bit trickier. Also, if the body gets like fatigue, you can either stop or you can go to the knees. So you can take it, you can take the body onto the knees rather than on the feet. You'll get more support <clears throat> for the body. Can't show just the back, yeah. So you can go to this kind of position, so I've got much more weight back in the body. And just move a little bit less. Just play with movement around the space, forward, backwards, sideways, all the time playing with this structure. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Yeah. And you'll find out very quickly what's like an inefficient structure. And what's quite an efficient structure. So one will just tire you out totally. It will take a lot of strength to hold the body up. And a good structure will you will just be able to fall into it. Okay, and then we're just gonna play with the fist. So just make a fist with it as well. So you've got three, you've got the palm contact, you've got like a cock you contact with the blade of the hand, and then also play with like a fist. So you're gonna press the fist into the ground this way. And just testing the structure. So it's like this, just test the structure. Don't kind of punch into the ground. <laughs> Don't do this, but just test the structure and then just send a bit of weight into the, into the, into the arm, into the fist. So that, that. And just play with it. You can go to the knees as well. That. Just test the structure a little bit. So you've got cock you, palm contact, or with a fist. Yeah. When you get into this, if you if you basically stay on the ground, you I start to feel like the ground becomes like a wall in front of me. So I, I start to I start to forget that I'm on the ground and playing with the ground like this, and I start to think of it like a wall. <clears throat> so think of it a little bit like I change my perspective a little bit. This becomes a wall. So I'm just kind of contacting the wall, and the weight goes a bit different. But... That's it. It's good, good, good. Nice. That's, that's, that's. Let's get a little bit harder. You can use any of them. You can use the knees as well. So you can use the palms, you can use the cock, or you can use the fist. 
I just want you to come down to the ground a little bit with it. So you're going to go in this position. It's like doing a press up. So there, there. And then just play with it with the cocky work. And also play with it with the fist. There. And just kind of play with it again. So just move around a little bit. You don't, you don't kind of constantly do the press up. Just play, move around. Find the space. You can also just go to the knees, makes it very easy. Just playing with the contact with the ground. So you've got the, the palm contact, cock you, walk with the fist. Or you can also mix them up. So you can do one hand with the cock you, one hand with a fist. That's it. <laughs> Ouch. In Japan, they have wooden blocks on the tatami. So on the canvas, they, they bring out lots of wooden square blocks. And in a gap, they want to do press ups in the morning on their knuckles. Oh, <laughs> Especially in the winter, really not great. <laughs> Interesting practice. Good for the spirit. Good for the. <laughs> Okay, we'll do one more. If you've got a very hard floor, this is not going to be possible. I'll show you why you can do it, but it still might be a bit tricky to do. You're going to start on the knees like this. And actually, if you've got like a cushion or something around, you can also use it. So what I want you to do is, it's a bit like you fall into the, into the push-up. So I'll show you with the push-up first, but this is designed for the fist. So it's a way to get the, the idea of impact into the ground. So you're going to do like this. I'll show you, it's just like this. And then leave the ground as well. So you're going to go up. Yeah, and then the fists come out. Yeah. And you just absorb into the ground. And then roll out. So it's just about it's just about exploring a kind of softness through the body. What I don't want to do in this case is like hold. So I don't want to actually punch the ground. I don't want to do oh, I don't like doing it. I don't like to do this. Like this. This will really really injure the body. So don't punch the ground. Receive the ground with the hand. So I'm placing the fist out and it's receiving. So it's soft. If you're not sure about it, do it really slow and just do like one side. So with the one hand, also if you've got a very hard floor, use this method. I get one hand out, I just reach out, press the weight in, and then press it out. So just make it a little bit easier. But if you can, if you've got a soft mat, just play with both hands and kind of come up, place the hands, let the body fall into it. So it's a bit like doing a Lukemi work. So it's a bit like the body softens into it. So just play it at your own level, make it, don't make it uncomfortable, but make it kind of challenging. So I want to explore the structure passing through the ground. This up. That. Bang up. It should feel quite soft. So it shouldn't feel like a kind of gun, heavy feeling. It should feel like a quite a soft, soft movement. That's it, Tom. That's good. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Nice. Yeah, and if, you, if you're if using the palms, also explore with a cock you work as well. So you can also do this with the blade of the hand. Just watch the little finger. I don't want to kind of fall on the little finger. So just let the body come into this position. And from the knees, just let it kind of... There's a really evil method of doing this. We've worked in a, in a pyramid. You do it in 10, you do it in 9, you do it in 8. So this is a really evil way to do it. This is a bit freestyle, so just kind of take your time with it. You need to take a break with it, do it. The main thing is not to injure yourself, especially the wrist. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Great. Good. And 
we're just gonna do a little bit of a chemistry. So just down in the ground, give the hands a bit of a rest. Just go in this nice basic movement. First, first we'll go like this, just to kind of go down the spine. You're gonna come like this. You go right back on the spine. Don't go on the head, and then just curl forward. So this is a nice one also just for the hips. So you're gonna be in a bit like a kind of butterfly stance with the, with the legs. Stretch the hips forward a little bit, stretch the body forward. Roll back, don't go into the neck. Just come forward. So you're just practicing kind of opening the hip out a little bit. Just taking the pressure away from the hands and the feet, the knees. Roll down the spine. Do this nice and slow, so there should be no pressure at all on the head, on the neck. Breathe out as you do it. Just use the opportunity as you come up, as you come forward, just to stretch a little bit more into the hip. Just a little more into the hip. That's it. Nice. Okay, so we're going to do this one. This is this is quite a strange one. You start on the on the like a cross-legged position. What I want you to do is like send the legs around. So use the hands. You're going to come forward and then send the legs out to the back and curl around to this position. to here. And then what I want you to do is go on the same side. Hopefully you can see. You're going to bring the legs out and forward, swing them around. So take the legs to the right side. Bring them back the right side. So let them out. Yeah. And bring them through. And don't worry about coming back to the front. So really play with it. And it's much more about getting this idea of swinging the body from the center. So I really want the idea of the hands are used as support and that I want to move the body from the center, get to the still position, and then get back by moving the center. That. This is also a kind of hip exercise. Let the hips be flexible as you do it. Just do a few to the right side, come back. And then a few to the left, I'll come back. A really great center, center exercise as well. So great for the core. That's it. Okay, so now what you're going to do is do this in one circle. So just imagine the feet go back. And then they continue, continue, continue all the way back. So you're gonna, if you go clockwise, go all the way clockwise. Okay, don't worry about coming back to the front. So you can do this this way, or you can do it like big movement. Obviously, if I keep to the front, I do more of a, I do more of a movement with the hips, so it's a, it's more beneficial for the body. But just don't worry about it. Just get this idea that the legs are going to go. Okay, just play with that. Imagine you're a little bit underwater. So you're kind of submerged in water. The only way you can really move is by, you can, you can flail the hands around and the legs. But the best way is actually to rotate the body from the core. So if you're kind of submerged in water, you can really kind of move the core then from, from, from this position, from, from move the body from the core in this way. And use the hands as much as you need to. <laughs> yeah, include the dog, the dog's coming in. <laughs> good. <laughs> Great. Yeah, good. And these are some of the torture exercises you can use on people before you do chemi and training. <laughs> Get the core active. Super. And then just come back into the back. So we're going to go here. Just roll it back into our hands. And you come back up. I'm really putting all the focus on, onto the center. So really have this sense that the center quite tight 
And the legs, the hands are really just assisting the center movement. Using the legs a bit like I would ride a bike. Powering the movement through the lower body and using the hands like tracks for the body. So really using full contact with the arm. Take it nice and slow. So just working now from standing. So you're gonna just move around the space a little bit, give yourself a bit of a, a bit of a break, and then just find your way into the ground, nice and slow. Roll down, just in the back, find the feet, find the hands, and just kind of play with it, play with the movement. So all this kind of stuff we were doing before of kind of get, uh, exploring the weight passing through the limbs. Just use it now. Find the easiest path down to the ground. Yeah, a little bit when we did the squatting position or when we did the squatting move and you kind of take it slow so you have one consistent kind of pace as you do it try and keep the same idea here so one of the problems with the head is that there's a, there's a tendency to kind of push through the movement and add to it so there's a tendency like to come to here and then i feel i get to the point and then i push into it and i'm basically pushing myself through the fall and what all i want to do is just kind of fold the body into the movement so just get a sense now that the body's just going to fold down but I don't, want to, I don't want to get kind of here and then add, add, and then six of the items. So just take it really slow all the way. Just do the last few. Keep one constant pace where the body just feels like it's drawing up and then drawing down the same pace all the time and try not to add momentum to it. It shouldn't really, I shouldn't feel the need to kind of speed up through the motion. Just get that kind of sense and just do a few really, really slowly in this way. Speed up the difficult parts so that that person is also telling me there's a kind of point I'm not so happy with. And going slow just helps us little bit more, find a bit more of an efficient path into it. Oh, okay, last one, just put in by your out. You go first, then it's this one. You go down, press up, and then roll over. Back into the press up. Down, roll over, and into the press up. And just make it as hard as you like. If you can, you can do forward rolls. Um, just make it as hard as you like. Or is it both? Actually, yeah, make it as hard as you like. As challenging as possible. And just do 10. You're just going to go down. One, roll. 
This one I was at two. Back and roll. Four. want to stop, just come back up, take the body up a little bit. straight into it, just coming to the back, cutting down, and to the back, just straight into that. If you feel kind of lose the focus with it, just stop, come back to the beginning, and then just find the first sabori again. Nice, clean, big movement. So for me, all the foundation of the, the way we use a temi, it's all in this, these kind of moves, especially the sword work, this kind of cut. So what I want you to just, just focus on is the idea of, of really centering the body down. So really feel that rather than the kind of impact happening in the sword here, really feel that the impact actually coming from the center. So feel that what's well, the, the first impact is with the ground. So really feel that the first impact is go, this, and then this follows into it. So just get the sense that you're actually, getting, what, you're, what you're doing initially is like impact into the ground. So just do a few like this. There's a kind of trick to it. Well, it's not really a trick, but it's just go like this and really feel that you drop the center. In. So the sword goes to this position and then just let the sword go. And you can do this left side, right side, <clears throat> but just get this kind of, get this idea of this impact. So you start from here, raise up, and then really get the sense that the center is impacting the ground. So it's not happening in the sword or out, out, out of the hand, but it's actually something happening in the core. That's it. The main thing is that the cut, the, the, the focus in the hands or in, and into the sword doesn't take away from the body. So what happens like, quite a lot with this is like it's, get, get, get the hands that this this pulls the body up, and what's happening is this in the body. So really, really just get a sense that all the weight, all the impact of the body there is here. So it's all happening in this in this area here, and this is the extension of that. So it's not that all the focus is going here and pulling the body out. 
but it's really the sense that this comes out of that. This comes out of that. This. So just play with a few. It's like this. You don't complete the cup. You just go to here. This. So that position, the center starts to fall into the ground, get impact into the feet, and then the snap happens in the hands. Like this. That. Just play with this. 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 And all of us have done Saburi for a long time. Most of us, like, many, many, many years. So this is a way to slightly break one of the habits that we've got in Saburi work. Just look at it a slightly different way. And that's it. If I can get a kind of handle on that or a taste of that kind of feeling, that feeling can kind of permeate everything I do. So whether you're doing like an ikkyo, or you're doing a ski, or you're doing a uraken, all these kind of things, there's always a feeling that's well, what, what's going to kind of impact the ground first is the body. So the, 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 the strike, this part, is really coming from a really, really, really firm foundation. And that the strike is actually, in, is in effect, you're hitting the person with the ground. So I want the feeling like the whole body structure is going to press through the, the weight of the ground, through the body this way. So just get a sense in this case, the, the best way to access this I find, I found is the first of root. But just go like in now into the second again. So just get the feeling now of like go, 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 the, release it to the back, go, 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 go. but put all the focus in the center. What's happening in the center of the body. And again, play with the movement. Don't always go into like Zengo. So don't always come front and back. Play a bit with the angle. So it's more about finding this feeling than, than performing the, the zengo. Just get the sense that the center impacts the ground. Impacts the ground. Impacts the ground. Yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Nice. Nice. Oh, okay. So much nice. Very good. Okay, so you can do the same thing, just going to number five. So just on the spot, raising up, impacting the body. So really feel that again, the release is also something that's released through the center. So all this stuff we did on the ground with like moving the moving the legs and the arms around the center. This is this case now, so this, and then this. So just focus on these two, these two elements of the cut, the raise, around the center to really do it, and then the cut, I want the center to really impact the ground. So again, it's really exploring your relationship to the ground through the footwork and through how the center connects to the limbs. Just want to split those movements, split the movement into the raise and the cut. Oh. 
that you're now really feel that you're actually passive, you're doing a different, slightly different movement than, than just kind of raising the shoulder in a kind of vertical line. So the the the, the fits of in this case, don't do it like this way. And then finally look at it's possible to do it this way. This way. I can just change it this way. But you'll get more a feeling of the spiral nature of the movement by letting the sword travel in a circle. So just practice now, it's like from here, really let the sword follow that hip work. So rather than the hip just kind of doing this, it's doing something else, which is like that. So it's slightly curling through it this way. So just play now with one, one movement. So the, the main problem with raising in a vertical, this way is then I've got to find the diagonal. And then I'm doing two things. So I'm raising up straight and then diagonal. What I want to do is just one thing. So just one movement through the body. But just now let this let yourself find it as one thing. So one cut, one movement, one cut. Again, really trying to get the sense of the weight impacting the ground. And the more I can impact into the ground, the more effect will come out of the sword. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good, 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 good. Done with a step, so do it your own way and play with the play with the saburi. But you're just going to now take a step each time. So now it's one step, one cut, one step, one cut. And you can start from any position. You can do two, three cuts. You can do a set of four and just keep repeating it. But I really want to focus now on this sense of the weight being translated forward into the ground this way. So much more complex action now. On the spot's quite easy, but trying to get it oh, in motion that. So I'm out of the I'm out of the ground. I'm out of the center. So really get a sense that you're going to place the weight bang, into the ground. The cut should feel totally supported by the body. I want to really avoid uh, this stuff. So no wobble. Try not to wobble through. Uh, run. Uh, nice. Good, good, good. Yeah, also play with going backwards as well. That's also a nice way to play with it. You can also shift the angle off a little bit. So rather than just going forward, you can go for diagonals. Lift it over to the back. Nice. It actually doesn't matter because whatever you're doing, you're always practicing the same structure. So whether you go forward, backwards, sideways, to the ground, on the spot, everything's going to follow that same kind of structure. And the weight relaxing to the feet. That's it. with a ski motion so you can use the six or the seven kind of using six this way or you can use yeah you can use the six on the both sides or you can use the seven if you strike on the right side you can also take the step with this way so just play with finding a strike finding a ski finding a strike finding a ski finding a strike finding a ski you just move around the space
Oh, okay, good. Just put the buckets to the side. We'll do a little bit of empty handed. Don't attend me work, really. So, so. so the problem with the attend me work is we feel a bit uncomfortable and don't know how to work the system. So we start to try and go, maybe I'll look at karate or maybe I'll look at kickboxing again. How do I strike? Because Aikido maybe doesn't teach me how to strike. But the good thing in our system, we teach people how to strike. We just do it with the sword and we do it with the gel. And you can basically extrapolate this. The work is basically extrapolating all that work into the, into the fist, into the handwork. So we do the training all the time. So it's, it's actually all in the system. We just need to unlock it and play with it. So it's trying to get the feeling from the sword work, the drill work, the knife work, all this stuff that we do. And the knowledge of all the atemi work that we already do in the system. So there's tons of atemi work that we do, putting out all this kind of stuff, atemi. The classic one we do is the shomenuchi. We do a lot of atemi work in our system, so it's all there just to, just to be played with. So we're gonna start with the uh, yokonuchi. So we did this last week. We're gonna do the form like this. So you come up like this here. And then what I want to do is similar in the way that you would use the hand in a, in a ski. You're gonna go up to here and you're gonna drop the arm down here. And the first thing, just do one side. And the, the, the key with the temi work for me is slow and steady and no power. So no speed, no power is basically the kind of thing to work with. And you're just working on coordination. So just play with this. And again, play with the form. Don't always feel that you need to kind of go into a strike. Play with the coordination. What's happening between the center and the two hands? Just play with it. It's nice and soft. Feels a little bit useless, but you're actually just practicing connection in the form. Okay. Just do a few one side, do about eight or ten one side, and then change the side. Uh, yeah, what's the other hand doing? <laughs> 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 okay good so i make it really simple so the, the main thing i found with these when i teach through the dojo is people can just get lost in in coordination what is the hand what are the hands doing so just make it really clear it's like this this hand is just going to do this 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 and every time it's going to it's going to like snap to the body this this is in a way is to, is to find the balance in the body so the, the problem with the yokman is like this this happening this and this hand's kind of floating. Everything's pulling me out. So this hand, this one is used to balance the body to the back. This way, this way, this way. So it's going to do this, this to the body. So you can even just separate that hand if you get kind of lost. What is the hand doing? Just go to that hand. Okay, and also like what that hand is doing as well. Then in the Shotokan, when we when when you learn these and you learn these kind of dry kata forms, and what is this hand doing? It's doing some strange things. A lot of the time, this is used like a grab. So I'd actually come in, grab and strike with it. So this is used as not just as like a preparation movement. It's actually used as an active hand. So it's not a passive hand in this case. So just get the sense that there's something happening in the hand, and you can think about kind of grabbing. What I think about is like grabbing someone and striking them with it. So it's a, it's a kind of trap as well. So you can think about this as like a balance thing, balancing the structure, but also think of it as I'm going to use it. So I'm, I'm not, nothing's going to go to waste in the form later. So just get the sense that something's happening in that arm. We tend to focus all on the front hand, the striking hand, but what's happening in the rest of the body is really important. That's it. Just play around the space a bit, so we're a bit trapped in the feet. So just have the sense that you're going to kind of come out, strike down, reach out with the hand, strike down. So just go with the feet. Normally you would spend like months and months doing the solo, go, 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 go. But because we're kind of used to doing it with the boko, again, it's just trying to unlock that work. So just get a sense now that you're going to kind of come up, strike down. And this hand, play with coming to the back this way, like this. And you can also play with it if you think when we do the yokonuchi in a in a in attack, what I'm gonna do is protect my head. So I'm gonna go into this kind of position and protect the head. So play with these two forms. If you feel a bit unstable, go to this one. I recommend going here <laughs> into this. But if you feel quite balanced, 
Let's go to that one. When this hand's going to go into a kind of protection of the head. And then, uh, It's like karate, classic karate chop stuff. So you see when people do this wrongly or when they try and hit something and they hit it with the hand like this and all the weights in the hand, it's the same as the sword work. I don't want to throw the cut into the sword. I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. I don't want to throw everything out into the hand. It's the same with the strike with the yoko so I don't want to do this. So what I want to do is deliver the weight of the whole body through the, through the arm. So really get a sense that the structure of the arm the elbow, the shoulder, connected to the hip, and there's something kind of heavy through it. So it's not about the hand. The hand's just the thing I'm going to make contact with. The whole body's going to find the strike. So just get the sense now of something very heavy. Go. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Also, just what, it's quite hard. The best thing I can suggest is is use a makiwara. Now, you don't need like an old Okinawan wooden board and very hard rice bag with steel ball bearings in it. You can just buy these. They're like ten euros from the sports shop, and they're, they're just as good. So. Just, just, just one thing to play. If you play with a makiwara, it's about how I deliver force to an object. So, what a lot of the time we're doing is we're actually delivering force very, you know, kind of strange way, which is like angled. So, if I deliver the force in an angle, then the the, the weight's just gonna, everything's going to go away from it. What I want to do all the time is deliver the force directly in, into the target, to the target back again. And that's what we do all the time when we do the first saburu. So, you're delivering again. It all comes back to the first saburu. It's just a very clear example of how to deliver force. So you've got this, and I just deliver the force, bam, straight through. But any and any and any kind of deviation from that uh, will break the fall. And the Yoko Manucci is delivering a, a talk to a target which is at an angle. So I'm delivering to the side of there through through the cut. So I always want to deliver the strike, whatever the strike is, to the target directly, bam, and not at an angle, which will cause like a glancing blow. I want the strike to penetrate the bone, bam, through the bone, like this. So just play a few, the last few, just with the Yokoman. But just get a sense of really now delivering something, again, through the core and to the core of the person. Although the target's the head, what I want to do is go right to the center, bam, through the strike. So just the last few, just want to play with it. You can also go back to the sword if you like. If you've got something to strike, also use that. It's also very nice. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Let's go. Nice. Yo, good. That's it, Adrian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Something heavy. Boom. Not so good on the left. <laughs> yeah, I have a weak side too, though, right? My right side's the best. <laughs> you can release it more, 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 more. Boom. Yeah, the best. I tell you, okay, we'll, we'll kind of stop. But just watch when you do. If you do makiwari training, always the advice is like do it slowly and with no power. So the first thing people do, it's a bit like when they get when they buy a bow, they want to buy the big powerful bow, and bang, they want to shoot it, and they end up injuring themselves straight away, and then they forget about it. So. We, we tend to buy makiwaras and then like, Wah! I'm going to go into this. And then I break the hand or I damage the skin on the hand and I go, oh, this is bad for me. But the best thing is like, just do it slow. So I just spend the day going like this. Stuff like this. <laughs> Simple stuff. And you can just do it with your hand. And you can do it on the floor. And you can do it in the air. But it's always that same kind of structure. But this kind of stuff, is, it's always best done like little, little, little things. I've done a lot. So I do a do like a lot 
not not heavy impact stuff, but doing a lot. So this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff. And the other thing is just practicing the coordination. What are the hands doing when I do these kind of movements? What are the hands doing when I do the movement? And we're used to coordinating the body like this anyway, because when we do like ikkyo, when we do rimi nage, we're used to the hands working together. So it's just unlocking those skills that we've already got and applying them in a, in a slightly different way. So that's basically it. And if you get confused about the attempt, you go back to the weapon work because the, the core of the blueprint of the, the teaching is in the, is in the weapon work for sure. So, okay. good. Okay, good, we'll bow out. If you've got any questions, anything's not clear, just let me know. Fortunately, not a lot of the uh, the Atemi work is on film. So that's one of the errors we also need to kind of get on the film. So, so. okay. Domo, arigato, gozaimasu. Domo, domo, arigato, gozaimasu. Step, step. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. You're Thank you. very welcome. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, girl. Bye. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Great. Oh, we are going to be sore tomorrow. Okay. <laughs>